Okay, I guess then we can get started. Um, I will leave the door open, I guess, for a couple of minutes and then close it later on. Um, my name is Andreas Riel and I want to build uh, together with you today um, an analytical application within uh, SAP ABAP Cloud. Okay, before we get started, maybe just a few words what to expect today from this session. Um, I will start with an, with an overview. What is embedded analytics? What do we understand um, uh, with embedded analytics and how does it relate to ABAP Cloud? Um, this will be kind of a, a review and, and a, a recap. So you probably have seen these, these ABAP Cloud pictures around the day uh, several times, but now we will put um, analytics into perspective. Um, then afterwards, I will show you the development flow for an analytical data model like it is today and how it is exposed as a service today. Um, after we've seen that, um, so I won't do it together with you, but uh, I have prepared a model that we will have a look at. And um, after we've seen that, we want to uh, see how we can improve that in future. Um, that development flow is, well, yeah, not, not ideal. So we have to improve it. And this I want to show you as well as a demo. Um, that's kind of a labs preview and will be delivered with uh, 24 um, 08, that will be one of these famous generators that you may have also seen so far. Um, but um, let's put it this way. So this is not 100% finished yet, of course. Um, it will evolve over time and the version we are delivering with 2408 is quite, quite basic. Nevertheless, it works and closes the gap that we um, had for, for a long time that we will see also. Then afterwards, we will um, check what can be expected beyond. So maybe in the in the next year, um, what um, will how will the development of uh, analytical applications be improved over time? And yeah, I think the point five is rather for for those of you who will um, get the slides and want to dive deeper today. So I will point you to some uh, blogs where you can really then deep dive in how to build uh, an analytical data model because today we only have like, I don't know, uh, 30 minutes in the code. So I can't really completely show you how to build an analytical model. So I will focus on really the, the highlights. Okay. And uh, now let's get started, as promised, with the overview, how uh, embedded analytics relates and belongs to, to ABAP Cloud. So who has seen this picture today? Okay, quite some people. <laughs> That's good. Um, and now let's put analytics into perspective. Okay, first of all, um, we have SAP HANA as a database underneath in, in ABAP Cloud. Why is that important? because first of all, uh, SAP HANA is an in-memory database, so it's quick enough to do uh, real-time analytics. And it has um, a row store and a column store. Uh, I don't know if I need to go in detail, but um, the row store is, of course, important for the transactional world, and the column store is important uh, for the analytical world, because in analytics, we, we, are, we want to aggregate uh, data sets, right? And we do that along columns. Columns is, in analytical terms, a dimension. Um, an example is, speaking of examples, so we are using the um, SAP flight model as an example, like probably everybody does here, or lots of people do. And um, we want to analyze here in our model um, the occupation rate of flights. And the occupation rates we want to then um, put into perspective to a dimension. And this dimension is, let's for example, let's say um, 
um, a destination airport and we want to see how the occupation rate of our flights uh, is, uh, is over aggregated over, for example, the destination airport. And therefore, we need that uh, feature in the HANA database of the column store, which accelerates these uh, calculations a lot. Okay, enough the database. Then um, we have CDS as the implementation type. Yeah? So, of course, we want to, first of all, uh, not break the, the development model with analytics. We want to have the same development paradigm that you have when you de develop uh, for in the transactional world. And this is done uh, warp style with uh, CDS views and uh, services. And we do it here the same way. So the, the advantage is, of course, that not only that you do not have to learn a new language, but also that you can use the same um, the same data models that you're using in the in the transactional world. We will see that later on. So of course there is um, an an interface view for the flights, and this interface view for the flights CDS view we are of course using as well in uh, when we build our analytical data model. So that means we can do now in in that system um, build an analytical model that directly operates on the live data that is in this system. And this is not only the case in, in a steampunk system, but also in an embedded steampunk system, and therefore in S4HANA, for example. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, development tools, I mean, that's, that's clear. We are um, working with CDS, and therefore we are also using ADT, so the Eclipse uh, ABBA plugin. And um, by the way, we also have key user tools in the analytics world, but I'm not talking about the key user tools today. So we will have a look at ADT, so the development, um, um, developer extensibility. Um, if you have questions to the key user extensibility, we can do it later on in the question and answers, or you let me know and uh, we can talk about that as well. But that's not the focus today. Okay. Then we come closer to the UI, um, service exposure. Of course, the service exposure also works in the same way, um, like uh, in, in RAP, so we have service definition and service binding. Um, the difference is that we are using a different protocol. Uh, in the transactional world, you use OData. Um, for analytical uh, UIs, we are using the ENA protocol. ENA is information access and is um, specialized for uh, analytical UIs. So you can do things with it, like um, having different aggregation levels alongside a hierarchy with uh, different aggregation types, which is not possible with, with OData yet. So um, I think we have to stick with uh, ENA for the analytical UIs and yeah. Uh, but that's also not a problem. Uh, we also have on the pipeline that we can mix ENA and uh, OData in the same UI. We'll see that later on in the Outlook. Good. Then let's, before we really uh, dive um, into the system, let's have a look at the artifacts. Do you all know these artifacts that you can see here? Do you know what a cube is, a query and a dimension? Everybody, um, okay, short, short recap maybe. Um, <laughs> so um, what we have here is the analytical star schema data model. And um, the cube is the heart of the analytical data model, so to say, where we draw together all the data that we want to analyze and the data that we want to aggregate by. Um, the cube contains measures and dimensions. Measures are the data, of course, that we want to measure, so that are, they are numerical. And the dimensions that are um, uh, the keys to, to the metadata. This is inside the cube. Um, you may now be confused because I said we have dimensions in the cube. 
um, but we have dimensions here as well. Um, so those are the dimension views and inside a cube we have only the, the key fields that relate to the dimensions. Um, I think it's better if we do an example again with, with a flight. Um, we've we talked about the airport before, the airport was a dimension and in the cube view we only have the airport ID and um, in the dimension view, we then have the, the metadata, like the geolocation of the airport and so on. And um, yeah, uh, geolocation, city, and yeah, usually those dimension views are delivered by SAP, but you can also build your own dimensions. I will not go into detail here. Uh, if you want to learn how to do that, uh, there's a tutorial out there. I can point you to that later on. Um, now, what is the query? The query is, um, like we said, we are querying the cube. Um, the query is um, like a consumption view that is uh, special for, for the UI, and we will also see the query then in the multidimensional UI later on. Um, you can imagine the query like a pivot table. A pivot table, you know, from, from Excel maybe, and um, yeah. But I would say, let's just have a look at the code and then it becomes clearer. Okay, so now switch to the code. And okay. that's the cube view. Okay. So, uh, specifics of the cube view, we can see it's a view entity as well. Um, it, there has the analytics data category cube, and there we can see that it has associations to the dimensions, like the airline connection, but also to calendar date for the flight date. Um, then we have uh, the dimensions that we've talked so far, and um, yeah, so the dimensions do not only come from, from one table. You can see here we have data from, from the flight table, um, but we also have uh, data from, from the connection or, or the flight date. This is because we want to aggregate by these dimensions as well. And in the cube view, we draw all of them together. Oh, yeah, okay. Better? Okay. Then we have the measures. The measures, like we said, are the um, numerical um, fields, and we wanted to calculate um, the occupation rate. And therefore, we, of course, want to have the, the number of seats that a flight has and the occupied seats. And additionally, I included here the, the number of flights. Okay, uh, that may sound strange if we look at data. Because of course, uh, now we have all the flights here, each flight is a line, and of course, the total number of flights per flight is always one. So this becomes then important if we do the aggregation. We will see that uh, in a minute when we have a look at the query. We have the query. Good. The query itself is also um, a view entity, transient view entity. There, it's identified by the provider contract analytical query. And again, we have the dimensions and the meshes in there. Now the difference is. Um, that we can now um, decide uh, from the UI perspective, remember the pivot table, in which um, uh, column or if, if we want to have um, a dimension in the columns or in the rows. So I put all of the dimensions here in the rows and we have the possibility also to um, say if you want to have totals for this dimension or not. All of them are hidden um, right now. So 
but that's possible. And for the measures, you can then um, define how they shall be aggregated. There are different um, um, methods to aggregate. I choose some because, uh, of course, we want to add all the seeds together to be able then later to, to calculate the um, occupation rate. And this is what we do here. We calculate the occupation rate. You may ask yourself, why do we calculate the occupation rate here in the query and not in the cube? The thing is that we um, do all the calculations that have to happen after the aggregation in the query and all the calculations that need to be done before the aggregation, they happen in the cube. Okay. Um, I think that's enough um, regarding the analytical data model. Let's just have a brief um, view of how it is exposed. So service definition, that is very straightforward. Uh, it just um, has that provider contract ENA and also the service binding is of type ENA UI. Then we have an IAM app so that we can later on really add this app uh, to a business catalog and then assign it uh, to an end user. Okay, these are the artifacts. You can see the, the, the latest artifact service definition, service binding, IAM app, and also business catalog. They're really very straightforward and um, yeah, very easy to create. So the um, where you put, need to put the brains in is the definition of, of the cube and a little bit in, in the query. Okay, now, uh, speaking of the query, let's have a look at how the query looks like. And, yes, okay. So this is already a Fury UI and that is new with uh, 24, I think, uh, of, I think we introduced it with 24.2 even before that. Uh, you could only have a preview of a query CDS wise, and now we have really the possibility uh, to preview the query like it would look in a multi dimensional way. Um, so this is, yeah, already a Fiori app, so to say, uh, but it's only visible for the developer, so you can't assign this app yet to, to an end user. Okay, but now we still want to see how the preview works. And we said we want to aggregate, and uh, now we do have all the dimensions in there. If we have all the dimensions, especially all the key uh, dimensions, then no aggregation is happening. So for the aggregation to happen, we have to remove them. And let's say we want to aggregate now by departure airport and concentrate on the um, occupation rate. And we can see that oh, the flights that depart in San Francisco have the highest uh, occupation rate and they are calculated from 54 flights in total. This is where now the flight counter comes into the game. Okay, um, oh, by the way, <clears throat> and we can even display it as a chart. Isn't that very nice? Um, okay. Good. So now we learned how to create an analytical data model. But what do we now do with this data model? Oh, pity. Sorry. Okay, we've seen that. Um, okay, so what do we do? Um, the only way to see this model as an end user right now is uh, via SAP Analytics Cloud. And you see here an SAP Analytics Cloud 
UI. This is out there for uh, quite a while now, um, and it's possible um, to consume uh, analytical INA services in SAC since, do you know it? One and a half years? Something like that already. But now we come, yeah, so I, I don't, as it's out there for, for, for a while, I, I don't want to show you details on how to do that. There are tutorials out there. Um, if you want, I can point you to them. I think I have also included them um, later on in the uh, in the link section. Um, but now is the question, how do we get really embedded analytics in a way um, that we also have a multi-dimensional analytical UI in the embedded system itself. Huh? And therefore, we would need a Fiori UI. Um, you've seen the preview is there already. So there must be something like an app there already. Um, but this is yeah, not available for the end user. So what needs to be done is that we introduce really the, the notion of, of an app here. And this is here, this multi-dimensional analysis app. Why do we need this app? Um, is mm, mainly because we, um, we do not only want to show a preview, we want to also have uh, filters that can be personalized. Uh, we want to have uh, an app that can be assigned uh, to with uh, IAM measures to an end user uh, and so on. So we really need an app uh, in order to do that. And usually you create the apps with Business Application Studio, but you've seen there is the, the app is already there. So there's nothing you have to really code in, 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 in Business Application Studio to get that. And therefore we said, okay, we want to introduce a generator that starts from the cube, see my, yeah, okay. That starts from the cube, generates a default query, generates service definition, service binding, generates this app more or less as a player for the query, uh, generates the IAM app, and um, then you can really just assign the IAM app to, um, to a business catalog and uh, take it to the administrator and assign it to a user. And this is exactly what I want to show you right now in the next demo. Okay, so um, this is really live now. I have created uh, an example before um, last night and um, <laughs> It made me crazy because it didn't work. <laughs> um, so uh, I can tell you that much. It will not work um, completely out of the box right now. So we have some, some issues there with the system. Um, the whole process is working, but uh, the generated app will not show up uh, in, in the Fiori uh, because some cache is not uh, updated. So um, but you will see the model that I created last night, because when I woke up this morning, um, it really worked because the cache was refreshed by then. <laughs> and I didn't find out yet um, what uh, is wrong there, so something we still have to fix. Um, but nevertheless, okay, let's, let's get started. We're still doing it live uh, and see what happens. Okay. So... Start the generator on the query. So query is exactly the one that we've seen before, just with a different name. And the app or the generator is called multi-dimensional analysis app, which should be called like that. Um, we select a package. Also something that could be nicer, so uh, should be pre-selected by the package where the um, cube is in already. And then you can define the name of a query 
I'll leave that as it is. Uh, name of service definition, service binding. And now we come to the app. The app consists of uh, an app descriptor and an app variant. And um, what we need uh, is the, the app variant we need for the personalization. And the app descriptor then includes uh, specifics on the tile. So let's give the tile um, some, some details. So subtitle. Generated semantic object. We have um, to assign that the app can can really start. So the target mapping will use this semantic object in action. Let's call that. Um, oh, have to use something that is not used yet. Like this, and we can even give it an icon with the icon URI that works like that. Okay. Um, and we also generate the IAM map. We leave that as well as it is. Now let's see, we get a preview of the objects that will be generated. Uh, also, that's not ideal yet, so there should be a preview underneath here um, of the objects. Especially, it would be nice to see um, the, the query that is generated as a preview, but we don't have that yet. And then we select a transport request and hope that everything works. Okay, looks good. Now let's uh, have a look at uh, if all the objects are there. So after um, the generation has finished, uh, we are opening um, the service binding. This is good because if, if the service binding is broken, nothing works. Um, and we can see the service binding has an external name and therefore we can see it is uh, working or should work as expected. Let's see what else do we have. Um, we have, oh, I have to refresh, no, sorry. So we have generated Uh -huh. Nobody realized that I'm in the wrong package. <laughs> oh, did I start the generator also in the wrong package? Oh, so <laughs> oh my God. Uh, okay. Um, shall we do it one more time? That's the one, right? Then ababconf, this one. So, okay. Uh, the query name is, I guess, burned now. Right one. Oops. Oh. <coughs> Sorry. Thank you. Uh, no, first one. So, subtitle, leave that out. Um, And the IAM app, which also choose a new one. 
next, next, finish. Okay, it, at least it gives me a reason. That app variant ID, yeah. Mm -hmm. They also already have that zero 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 at the end. Uh, let's see. <laughs> because thanks to Nadine, we are getting right naming. Uh, suggestions for service definition and service binding already. Um, okay, so that worked now. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Refresh. And you have generate the service binding. Looks good. Service definition then, of course, also looks good. Um, what is interesting is, of course, how does the query look like that we generated? Um, and you can see this query is obviously not so uh, sophisticated like the query that we manually designed. Um, what we're doing right now is that we are just taking the first two dimensions and the first uh, measure, taking it in there so that you know uh, how to get started. And the idea is that uh, we generate the complete app and you can later on then just refine the query um, because this will directly then, then influence the app and you don't have to generate again. Okay, so that um, worked okay. Now let's see. Um, so what I would do now, what I told you is um, kind of a waste of time now, is that uh, we create a business catalog um, and include the IAM app to the business catalog and then go to the um, administrator and assign the app there. That's what I did last night. And if you believe me, then I would say, let's jump over to the administrator and I show you what uh, I generated yesterday. Uh, and we see if that looks okay. So that was the um, preview that we had before. So now, of course, we are still with the developer in there. We want to go out and go in there with the business user. So I won't do the step with the administrator. Yeah, that's me. And da -da. that's the ETN 100. Um, and this is the app that I generated yesterday with a nice flight icon. And it is working. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. So let's stop the demo and move on with the slides. So we are now at the point um, where I tell you what's next. Ah, oh, great. Here we go. Um, we've seen with 2408, we will deliver that, deliver that first version of multi uh, dimensional analytics and analysis apps, including the charts um, for for the developer. You've seen it's 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 not perfect yet, and to be honest, um, it's not working with with every cube. So if the cube is uh, uh, complicated, it it uh, will not work perfectly. But at least you can um, now generate analytical apps that you couldn't uh, generate before at all. Um, and um, once you have generated the app, you can still then modify um, the, the generated query and the generated 
uh, no, cube is not generated, the generated uh, query afterwards and can even modify the cube that you used as a starting point afterwards. And then in the subsequent releases, we will, of course, um, um, improve this and also improve the intelligence with uh, uh, that we generate um, the, the query. We might even include uh, AI support for the query. We have some, um, some ideas how we can do it um, in an intelligent way also without AI. So we'll probably go in two directions and have one um, that is rule-based and one that is AI-based. Let's see. Um, but we're uh, investigating in, in that direction. Um, what we will also do is that we uh, will um, have a generator for review booklets. I don't know if you have uh, heard about the review booklets before. They were introduced in S4HANA recently, but as a developer in, in an ABAP system uh, or ABAP cloud system, you ca cannot uh, create them yet. A review booklet is kind of a dashboard uh, yeah, similar to the one that you would create in SAC that contains multiple queries um, and that can be deployed as a native Fiori app as well. And uh, yeah, so this is also coming in the next couple of releases. Um, then is something um, that goes beyond the generator. We want to uh, also support um, Fiori elements. Um, so that means that you can create analytical apps also with Business Application Studio. Um, probably have an analytical floor plan or analytical building blocks that goes in the direction that we uh, want to have also hybrid apps where you connect uh, transactional and analytical parts in, in one app. What I mentioned before that you have an inner service and an OData service in one app. Uh, in order to build such apps, you will then have to go through Business Application Studio. So for that, we won't have generators. Okay, what else? Um, additional Fiori UI controls, smart business. Um, you know that from the uh, key user tools, maybe KPIs, um, is something that we will invest in. And yeah, that I mentioned so far, combination of transactional and analytical applications. Good. Um, then I don't, I don't know, should I should you see what you could do next? Well, okay, um, maybe just briefly. So if you haven't watched uh, the ABAP Cloud in Action by Volker Drees, uh, look at the recording. There we have details that go in that direction, working with code generators by Andre. Um, and of course, the core data services deep dive from Andrea and uh, Konrad this morning here in the room. Um, and we also have uh, a GitHub hands-on session for uh, building analytical data models out there that is linked in there if you want. Have a look. This is also possible in the steampunk trial systems. Generation of the app, not yet, um, but will come as well. Um, but you can also uh, generate um, or create analytical models there. And there's a, a description how to uh, create dimensions and so on. We'll probably have more with how to create hierarchies, uh, uh, et cetera, PP in future as well. Yeah, different tutorials, blog posts. I think uh, I won't go into detail on them right now. And then I'm already at the end. If you have uh, additional questions, then now is the time. Yes? Yeah. Um, the code is not yet on, on GitHub, um, but I do have a GitHub repository for the tutorial where, um, well, at least the code is in there so that you can copy paste the code from there. Um, that's possible.
Um, does the multi-dimensional reporting app allow you to change the aggregation type on the measures? Yes. So yeah. the, the default is just the default, and you could default define in the query. Yes, the aggregation type. Yes, I think you can change it in the. Uh, Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can. Uh, would have to look into, into detail how to do it right now, but uh, that should be possible. So you can change um, how it looks. You can change uh, the the layout. You can change uh, the um, the formatting and yeah, pretty much everything. But it doesn't uh, write back into the query. Uh, this version of multi-dimensional report is it um, different from the one what we use in on-premise? Uh, no. So we are using uh, in the background as well the analytical engine, and uh, in on-premise Ina is 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 also used. So it's just um, that we now have uh, a Fiori UI for it, um, which then will also become available in on-premise as well. Okay. Uh, but the uh, just yeah, different visualization. Are there any plans to support application? So if I develop an application, uh, so analytical list page with you know just a standard aggregation CDS view to make that available to be used without the BW engine involved, like the non non INA ones. Uh, yes, that is also uh, already possible right now. So in Business Application Studio, you can uh, define that. Uh, um, all data analytical list pages already to use in this though. Uh, no, so the, uh, this UI is really Ina only. Yeah, yeah. sorry, I didn't, didn't misunderstand it. Yeah. Okay. If there are no more questions, um, and thanks a lot, everybody. Have a nice day. And if you still have questions later on, here my name is on the slide, uh, email address, first name, dot last name at sap.com. And yeah, let me know.